Today's video is an intuitive figure painting that I did in front of a live audience. There are some questions that they've asked that I've left in, hoping that they would be valuable for you as well. If we haven't met, I'm Pat from Scrivener Art and Design. On my channel, I share tips and demos of paintings to help you grow as an artist. Thanks for following along on my journey. I also want to mention that I have workshops coming up. I have a Soul Sisters workshop in my studio on September 30th in Parksville, British Columbia. There is still some space in there. And aside from that, there's an intuitive figure workshop both on Zoom and in my studio and also a Soul Sisters on Zoom. I'll leave the links below that you can check out all the dates and information and sign up if you're interested. It's a great way to get more information than you can just by watching my videos. You actually do the work, get some help along the way, get some feedback, and even after the course is over, you can still get feedback. There will be a second part of the painting uh, that I finished in the studio because I did not finish it in the demo. So stay tuned for that. It will be coming up in the next uh, week or two. And I hope you enjoy this. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions as well. I'd be happy to help. Okay, let's go. So I'm going to be looking for my pattern. I might look at things I want to try and save, um, but I'm not going to get hung up on that. But I do like this part. So I may be thinking I'll have a figure over here. Capture that. This looks like a boot to me right at the moment. I'm going to um, start by putting some uh, heads on. So I'm mixing a little bit of white and my quinacridone crimson. As soon as there's a, something that looks like a head and you know, I said four is awkward, so I've got to put in another one or two. And I don't want my heads to be in a row, straight across. I want some up and down to them. Maybe I'll put an arm on. Yeah, I'm really liking this part in between too. So the trick in the beginning is to save more than you think. You can get rid of it, but don't get rid of too much. So I'm going to put another head in here between those shoulders. So I've mixed up a neutral color of green because I'm going to keep this painting fairly analogous with greens and blues. So I've got green um, that I made out of my Benzi yellow, my cobalt, no, cerulean blue, and the quinacridone crimson. So when you're making a neutral, you want to gray it down, and graying it down means adding the opposite. That's, that's going to neutralize it so it's not such a strong color. And again, this may change, this will change.
one thing I'm trying to determine is um, who's standing in front and who's behind when I'm doing this. So you, you don't want to have it confusing the viewer that one leg is in front but the skirt is behind and stuff. So really analyzing who's behind what. So that's kind of what I'm doing in the hemline um, area and negative painting around some shapes and stuff. I think they started making these china markers a bit on the cheap side. They break so easy. Okay. I tend to... Um, loosen them up so you saw me start to scribble over top of that and sometimes that's just a gestural thing to kind of change things up a bit and move them forward so I think I'll I'll use a little bit of text um, yeah so you can rip your your uh, collage paper or you could cut it if you want hard edges depending on what you're doing. So I think I'm going to make a hard edge. Maybe not. Never have a bag. So when you work with collage, doing stuff like this, uh, you have the advantage of determining the shape and scale, the size of your piece. So I'm going to give her a bag. I'm going to pull that right off the edge as well. Um, take the eye out of the picture.
purpose of collaging that thin strip onto the middle person? I don't know. I just like the piece. It might go away. Um, just added some line in there. Okay. I don't know. It's supposed to be like a strap or anything like that or an arm. No, no. I just... I don't know. I don't know why I do some things. I just do them, and then if they don't work, I cover them up. Uh, so it just felt right at the time. So with the collage paper, I've determined my shape, although I can change it with opaque paint. But what I'm trying to do is leave some of the... Um, print to show through on the on the bag and um, I think I'm going to do that with a leg as well Thank you. Yeah. So I made two lime greens. The one is with cerulean blue and benzy yellow, and the other one is with ultramarine blue and benzy yellow. And, and the last one, cerulean and yellow. Cerulean blue and benzy yellow is the bright green one. Yeah. And the other one is ultramarine blue and benzy yellow. So I don't, I like green gold uh, paint from Golden, but I don't have any left, so I have to try and make my own. So the best, the best I've come up with. So I'm making the bottom a bit darker now, just slightly. Okay, I'm probably going to have to make her another boot, but... Um, <laughs> she looks like she she might need one. So you don't want your whole um, your whole background to look exactly the same either. So I like modulating my color. Well, I paint the background negatively right from the beginning to to figure out the figures, right? Yeah, but, but the actual painting, the, the finished work on the background is after you paint the figures. Yeah, well, it's it's during the whole time, right? I'm building up layers and I'm 
I'm keeping making refinements of my figures with the background paint. So uh, continually going in um, around things to change it. So I'm, I paint the background several times from beginning to end. It's always building up the layers. But I kind of decide on my background color usually fairly uh, from the beginning. I don't change it too much. I might lighten the value if I want them to pop out more, which I think I, I did here at the top. So, but I need the background color to come in and change these figures up to be able to modify them slightly. The other thing I didn't talk about is edges. So you want to make sure that uh, you're aware of your, the edges you're making. So whether you have hard edges or soft edges or a variety of edges, right? Variety is a good thing. So I don't want all my edges to be uh, really strong lines. I want them to, some of them to be more blended in with, with other um, elements. So losing them. Um, yeah, so I'm going to change the shape of her dress. That's what I'm going to do right now. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. hair on her. Distance. Yeah, yeah, and it would be too busy. It would be too much to fill that space in. I know what you mean. 
Yeah, so so I'll just show you one other uh, thing that I, I may um, use at the end of the painting. What I talked about before was the Fosca pens. Oh, yes. So with them, where it's dry, you could take, let's see, I think this is a closer color. You could do a little bit of line work with them. So I could come in and do some fine stuff or I could, you know, um, you could draw hair, you could sign, I could put a strap. I don't know if that's the best color, but. Yeah, so you can use them um, to get some finishing details. Thank mm -hmm. you.